Okay, in this presentation what I am going to do is I'm going to start off with a, an example that I used previously. So I used this data set in a previous uh, video where I looked at systolic blood pressure and diastolic blood pressure. And what I did in that video is I computed the Pearson, sorry, the Spearman rank correlation coefficient. So essentially what I'm going to do is use that same data set again and just make, just actually sort of reintroduce it and just point out that there are 10 cases in the data set. That's all. Okay. So systolic blood pressure or D, D, diastolic blood pressure and systolic blood pressure and there are 10 cases. Okay. So what I'm going to do first off is just actually actually formally set out the question. Okay, so I'll just bring this down a little bit. Okay, so we could just read it all there properly. There we go. So the first part is I'm giving you this piece of information. The Pearson correlation coefficient is 0 0.673. And again, I'm just sort of stating again that there are 10 cases. Okay, now the population value for the correlation, which is it's what the Pearson correlation coefficient is an estimate of, is denoted rho. Okay. Uh, or as you would sort of verbalize their rho or ho. Okay. Now the the job at hand in this particular video is to test at a significance level of one percent. Okay. Just move that around. The hypothesis that rho is equal to zero. Okay. Versus the the alternative hypothesis that it is greater than zero. Okay. So. If it's zero, there's no uh, relationship between diastolic blood pressure and systolic blood pressure, okay? And if it's greater than zero, it means there is some sort of, th there is a positive relationship, okay? So, just actually as a remark, this indicates here, this would indicate at one tail test, rho greater than zero, okay? So what I'm going to do actually is, this is an important part of the exercise, but it's not actually part of actually the hypothesis test. It's actually how to calculate the critical value for the test. So this is actually what, something you would do from statistical tables. Uh, you gather up all this information and go to statistical tables and work from there. So we're told that it is a 1% significance level. So uh, alpha equals 0.01. As I just pointed out, the number of tails is one. Okay, one tail test. The sample size here is 10, as in there's 10 cases. Now, this is important to remember, okay? Degrees of freedom, uh, DF equals N minus two. When you're doing hypothesis tests for correlation or regression, the degrees of freedom is N minus two. So N minus two in this case is eight. Okay, that's very important, okay? That is something, so that's always for in the case of, um, as I sort of said, correlation and linear regression and stuff like that. When you do a hypothesis test in those sort of subject areas, you use the degrees of freedom n minus 2. 2 being uh, the number of variables we're talking about, which is 2, okay? So if you go to your tables, uh, you should find that the critical value is 2.896, okay? Now, again, if you are not familiar with how to use the statistical tables, this is the wrong video you're, uh, you should be looking at, but you should be able to gather up all of the information that you see there in front of you and find that. So just actually is a sort of just a way of checking if you're going about it the right way, okay? So what I'm gonna do now is actually go and calculate the test statistics. So I just have to bring this back into shot, okay? So that is the formula for the test statistic, okay? Um, I'm just gonna say test statistic or TS from now on, but this is actually how it might be formally presented, okay? R is the Pearson uh, correlation coefficient, which we've just been given. Uh, N minus two is the sample size or the number of cases minus two. So that's 10 minus two, which is eight. And we're using the square root of that. So it's the square root of eight, okay? And 1 minus r squared is 1 minus 0.673 squared. Again, we were told r at the uh, what r was at the start of the video. Okay, so this is a bit of calculator work. So what I'm going to do there is just actually finish this off. Okay, so that is equal to 0.67. Okay, so actually, uh, 73... Uh, so that actually, that is equal to, let's just sort of do the top bit there, 0.673 by the square root of 8. 
that is sim you should find that to be 1.9035 uh, let's work to four decimal places okay and the underneath so that should be straightforward enough calculation we have 1 minus 0 0.673 squared that should work out to be the square root of 0 0.5 four seven zero okay and when you get the square root of that you should get one point nine zero three five over not point seven three nine six sorry I'm going out a shot there okay so uh, and working that out what we should get is a test statistic of two point five seven five Okay, so that is our test statistic, okay? So that's grand. So what we're gonna do now is actually just uh, employ the decision rule, okay? So the decision rule there is, the test statistic is 2.575. The critical value is 2.896, okay? So the decision rule is this part here. Is the absolute value of the test statistic, because we could get negative answers, so our negative test statistics, and what happens is that the absolute value will just, um, it, sort of, it, sort of, it sidesteps that problem. Is it greater than the critical value? So just actually compare these two numbers here. Is the absolute value of the test statistic greater than the crit critical value? No, not in this instance. So we fail to reject the null hypothesis. And let's straighten that up there. Not enough evidence to say that rho is not zero. So essentially, there's a certain um, a multitude of ways that you can interpret the, uh, you know, you can sort of interpret that output there, but that'll do. Okay, we'll leave it there.